Welcome to ITV's Travel Hero podcast, which today has turned into a video cast. I'm your host, Charlotte Lamp Davies, with management consultancy A Bright Approach. Our travel heroes today come from the field of sustainability, and I'm looking forward to diving into this topic with such esteemed experts. They are Professor Caroline Wiegerink, Professor Harald Pechlana, and Professor Willy Legrand. Welcome to the video cast. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Same for us. Thank you. Great to see you. Wonderful to have you all three here. To kick us off, please tell us a little bit about yourselves, your career path, and why sustainability became such a focal point for you in your life and your careers. Caroline, let's start with you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, my name is Caroline Wiegerink. I'm a professor of City Hospitality, Hotel School, The Hague, International Hospitality Business School. And my perspective on sustainability is deeply rooted in how to create and sustain welcoming places for all stakeholders, including nature. And how this is imbalanced and how the hospitality ecosystem can contribute to it. So my field is the hospitality field. Our academic and industry research at school centers around tourism-driven benefits uh, for residents and community empowerment as a part of regenerative tourism, one could say. And so I'm driven by creating value for society at large. Fantastic. So you work very much with the local communities, as I, as I understand it. Yes, we, we do. Yes, thank you. Fantastic. Will you tell us a little bit about how you ended up here? Uh, thanks so much, Charlotte. It's a pleasure to be here. So my name is Willy Legon. I'm a professor at the IU International University of Applied Sciences that's located in Germany. And well, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a long story, but I'll keep it short. I grew up on a farm. <clears throat> I grew up on a farm in Canada. So when you grow up on a farm, you're always looking at the careful handling of nature and resources, you know, water and soil. And, and you're always monitoring the weather conditions during planting, harvesting. And I didn't realize growing up that this was going to have such an impact. But in fact, it did. I ended up studying geography. I went on to do a, a, an MBA eventually and with a corporate environmental management focus for going on my PhD. So I think all of this has influenced me so much that when I entered the tourism sector and hospitality in particular, uh, I was interested in bridging those two things, bridging my understanding of environment uh, and, you know, the careful handling of resources with hospitality mm -hmm. management. And this is a little bit sort of my, my path, in fact, although I've been in education and research now for over 20 years, because that's where I thought I was going to make the greater impact, in fact, is in mm -hmm. education uh, and starting with those that are going to be managing this industry. Fantastic. Well, indeed, that is something that all three of you have in common uh, uh, around education and uh, and helping us all understanding what we what we need to do to do better. Harald, we get to you. Please introduce yourself and tell us how you got to where you are today. Yeah, thanks, uh, Charlotte. Well, uh, my name is Harald Bechlana, Professor of Tourism at the Catholic University of Eichstätt Ingolstadt in southern Germany, and. Uh, at the moment, also founding chair of a school of transformation and sustainability at that university. So today, uh, the topic of sustainability uh, is very, very important for my uh, work uh, and career. Uh, but this was not always uh, the case. I studied business and economics and uh, with this focus on tourism, I more and more realized that uh, tourism is an interdisciplinary uh, issue, and that we have to this we have to see and to analyze uh, these tendencies and this phenomena uh, from from different corner angles, from different uh, perspectives and views. And uh, more and more, uh, we started to integrate next to economic aspects, also social aspects, and later uh, ecological aspects uh, into the discussion. What I like to say is uh, that uh, sustainability uh, later uh, became a quite important aspect for me. I started together with UNWTO, with the World Tourism Organization, to work on this project called INSTO, which is the International Network of Sustainable Tourism Observatories. 
uh, when we uh, started to define uh, indicators just in order to have a better basis for measurement of uh, sustainability. So sustainability is not only an objective, but sustainability is also a kind of process uh, of development. And uh, coming back to my, uh, my, let me say, my special focus, looking at the research, destination yes. development connected with a long-term strategy, how develop, how preserve resources and how uh, uh, bring back uh, the world to a balance with special focus to touristic destinations. This is that what I uh, do in my, uh, in my uh, field of research and in my work. It's fascinating. Thank you very much, all three of you, for those uh, great introductions. Howard, we'll get back to some of your research work, obviously, as we go through. Um, let's dive in. Let's dive in. There's so much to get through in, in our sort of designated 25 minutes. Um, in 2024, ITB Berlin is inviting everyone to become a pioneer in the transition in travel and tourism together. So my question, my first question will be, how can sustainability contribute to this slogan? And is the word together really key to success? Uh, Willie, let's uh, kick off with you first. <laughs> okay, I get, I get the honor. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 pioneering, I think is an interesting word, a choice of word, actually, I think in a way, I'm sort of a bit critical as well in what we do. And I think this is partly because we're all academics. So we tend to see things from a critical standpoint. And I was wondering about sustainability, particularly in terms of pioneering. And I would argue that it, the pioneering, we're not at the pioneering stage when it comes to sustainability in many ways. This has been going on. The pioneering has been happening years ago when we talk about really pioneering in sustainability. I think we're much more down the road, but this, the, the, the slogan is still relevant though for ITB because in fact, if there is any pioneering to be done, I think we're looking at, and Harald, I think, put it right, we're looking at a balance. The balance, however, is, is even more than a balance. It's about, for me anyways, the way I see it, when we look at all the broken records that we're having, whether it's on climate or biodiversity, etc., cetera, it, it's more than just a balance. It's about restoring. I mean, it's about restoring. It's about revitalizing. It's about regenerating. It's about net positive. It's going beyond, in fact, and I quite like the fact that, in fact, sustainability is not a goal, for sure not. It is, it, it is a path, of course. It is, a, and, and arguably now, you could say it's, a, it's even a level playing field. It's, a, it's the starting point of any business. You have to be sustainable. What's beyond that is to have more handprints than footprints, really. It's really looking at that. Yeah. And this is where I think we can do pioneering work, actually. I, I hope this helps a little bit in terms of, sort of the, the, the thinking behind it. No, I, 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 I like that very much. I, 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 t I tend, maybe I'm more academic than I realize. I tend to be quite cynical in a lot of situations. So we will get to kind of all the talk and whether the walk is, is happening as well in a little while. Sure. Caroline, would you like to come in on, on this first question and, and, and see where we are as a, as a pioneer? Yeah. In terms of pioneering. Yeah, when I entered uh, this field of uh, research uh, 15 years ago, it was all about bringing in as much as uh, possible uh, guests uh, that stay longer and uh, spend more money and in that sense, uh, and how to really can create hospitable places. And when I see how the sector, but also I think uh, yeah, sort of driven by what externally was needed is now moving towards is to really think about, okay, how can we connect? How can we really not only create hospitable places for tourists, but also for everybody who is part of this uh, system, that, that community. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, there are yeah, pioneers, there are some interventions and some uh, very interesting developments where we can see that really, yeah, that things are happening. So uh, residents are much more in the picture for destination marketing organizations. The term sustainability, sustaining a welcoming community, yeah, for society on large, bringing back uh, tourism for good are not only things to, yeah, are not only marketing slogans, but are really yeah, sort of uh, anchored in uh, how, uh, yeah, the, I think the hospitality sector will really like to move forward. Great. Thank you, uh, Caroline, for the insight. Howard, would you like to add your thoughts to the pioneering aspect of, uh, of the industry as far as sustainability is concerned? Yeah, thanks, you. I, I, well, I guess uh, 
at the moment, the tourism system is not a pioneering system. Uh, but I would say there is a big hope uh, to, to go in the, in the right direction. I think that one, one of the problems is the missing uh, system thinking of tourism. Uh, tourism is a phenomenon. Tourism is not just uh, an economic sector, it's much more. Tourism is a culture. Tourism is an, uh, embedded uh, into regional uh, contexts, networks. Uh, and so we need a lot of different stakeholders contributing uh, to that what eventually sustainable tourism can be. This is one aspect. The other aspect is that uh, tourism is depending by so many different uh, aspects such as aviation, uh, accommodation, so uh, all the hotel buildings behind, and the whole destination development. So we need many stakeholders, many networks, uh, and all of these networks have to, uh, let me say, follow a certain path uh, to sustainable, uh, to sustainable goals. So uh, I think uh, we can uh, do it. Uh, tourism can become a pioneer. Tourism can become even an agent of change, I would say, uh, to, to go in the right direction. But we have uh, some efforts to do uh, in, the, in the near future. Mm, absolutely. And perhaps that's the link to together, actually, which is the second part, which, which that is a very strong word, I would argue, that, that idea of, of together, of co cooperation, collaboration. I think that that's, yeah. that's where, you know, considering the amount of stakeholders in this industry. Together yeah. is even broader than one might imagine. Yeah. Yes, I yes. was going to say, because it goes way beyond the tourism industry in, 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 in the first place, doesn't it? You know, we, we need to, to, to dip into so many, many other areas and sectors in, in, in order for this to work for tourism, because it, it has to work for more than just tourism. Um, so, so what does tourism need to focus on from, from, this, from our sustainability perspective in order to actually start seeing some results? What should we focus on more? There's much talk, uh, I would say, about net zero and biodiversity. But, but what does that actually mean, um, Harald? Maybe, maybe you want to uh, kick off with that one. Yeah, I would say, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this discussion, so we are talking about uh, the tourism as an economic sector. We are talking about tourism as, let me say, a societal lifestyle and we are talking about the environment uh, uh, with this idea of preserving resources. So what we need is an integration of these uh, three pillars. When we talk about uh, economy, then we have to look at uh, economic benefits. Uh, other examples such as employment or seasonality. Uh, when we look at the society, then we have to use to talk about uh, local and visitor satisfaction or land use and landscape uh, uh, aspects uh, or last but not least environmental issues such as energy management, water management, wastewater management and so on and so forth. So what I like to say is that uh, this is, uh, uh, we need certain pillars and next to them uh, we need an integrated view uh, into uh, one common uh, goal and perspective towards, let me say, a future-oriented world, preserving resources on one hand, but on the other hand, developing uh, in a, in a, with, a, with this long-term uh, view, uh, a society uh, with the idea to, uh, to travel, to travel in a much more sustainable way, which in other terms means that we uh, we should be careful with the world. We should keep in our mind uh, planetary uh, borders and planetary limits uh, and uh, go uh, step by step uh, into, uh, into a new idea of how we understand our own uh, way to travel. Yeah, I mean, William, my, my, well, I know William and Karen both want to come in. I, I, I think just uh, what you're, I mean, th 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 there's, there's a sensitivity here that needs to be understood in the way that we move forward, really. Um, much more possibly respect than what has been shown in the past. There's lots and lots of words in this conversation could, could probably last a long, long time if we went into to all the aspects of it. But will it come in uh, here as well? And then, Caroline, I'll get yeah. to you. I mean, just, very, just very shortly, because... Uh, I, I mean, this, this, is the, this is the challenge, isn't it? Because 
tourism, we don't have the luxury, unfortunately, we don't have the luxury to only focus on one particular issue to fix because we have so many different challenges and risks really for, for us. And they all interact with one another. And this is what, I think this is where we're starting to realize we're talking about, we, we, we tend to see crisis as, as something in, in a silo really, or as, as one crisis on its own to deal with. But I think there's a realization that we're talking about a poly crisis, right? A, a global poly crisis, one interacting with the other one. And we're, we're sort of in the eye of the storm with this, with tourism, simply because we depend so much on social systems around the planet, on uh, healthy working ecosystems, etc. So we depend on all of this. So this is a, a real risk, and it's not only one issue. And I realize um, when, when thinking about sort of, you know, what should we fix when we see results, I realize that we do have a carbon tunnel vision in this industry. I mean, we, we focus heavily on... Net zero, net zero there's a lot of promises out there that doesn't mean that we're making we are making some progress but we're still clearly off track there's plenty of reports that show this um so but but we do have the tools we know how to do it i mean we know how to deal with energy uh a topic and, and we can do it so that's the positive aspect to it and we can see results but let's not forget that by fixing a topic such as emissions you are, you are, we have to be aware that there's a connection, interactions with topic biodiversity, and it's as close as yeah. using carbon offsets and things like that. Absolutely. Caroline, would you like to come in on, on this one of the many yeah. complex questions? <laughs> no, I think it's, it's, it's very difficult. What my perspective is also, it's all about, uh, let's say, it's about habits, it's about behavior, it's about experience of people. So, in that sense, uh, when we say, okay, we have to uh, have a look how we travel, but it's also to make it transparent for the consumer mm -hmm. and to really uh, try how can we uh, influence consumer behavior and mm -hmm. not only go with the flow. And then at the one hand, it's all about residents and this is, uh, we should be first. And at the other hand, uh, we do not really realize how valuable tourism and tourism activities could, could be. So I think it's all about transparency, not uh, yeah, really telling the true story, but uh, trying to put yourself in the position of consumers who should change behavior and other stakeholders who could react uh, to it. So this is also an industry and an interesting aspect. I think we have to think about how to uh, position this movement, which is, of course, very important. But uh, yeah, how do yeah, we... But... Yeah, very, very much agree, actually, with with all the three sentiments here. Um, I mean, net zero for the travel sector just sounds like a really, really tough challenge. And I don't know if we realistically can achieve this. But as you say, we, we know, William, William alluded to that as well, we know what needs to be needs to be done and i'm wondering a little bit about the next sort of the next suggested steps Harald, if i can bring you back in could you maybe talk to us a little bit about the travel foundations and academic research in this particular field because i think that might be be quite relevant here yeah uh well just uh, before i do that uh, coming back to the first report of the tourism panel of climate change uh, so we see that between eight and ten percent of the worldwide emissions are uh, by are, are produced by tourism uh, just to say it in a simple way so there there is a lot to do definitely yeah we see that uh, the aviation but also cruise ship uh, the cruise ship sh uh, sector and other aspects and elements of tourism uh, have to contribute. If, if they do not, then we will not be able to uh, to go uh, that, uh, towards uh, the, the neutrality uh, in climate uh, issues. Uh, this is one aspect. The other aspect, uh, Travel Foundation, yeah, they showed it us uh, in, a, in a very clear way. Again, uh, we have aviation, the car uh, sector, uh, rail and other transports, uh, the accommodation last but not least, so we can increase uh, the energy efficiency. We will be able to do that. Uh, we can introduce more high-speed rail tracks. We can elect, uh, we, we can make it possible that all the cars uh, can uh, based on electricity. Uh, and last but not least, also the e-fuels. There is a, a 
big debate about that. I think that the, the, the intensity of the discussion is showing us that something will happen and, and there is more and more also political agreement uh, and commitment uh, in doing that. And what I also can see and uh, that we have different uh, possibilities of interventions, again, coming back to Global Foundation, uh, showing us uh, different uh, interventions and categories, such as, uh, in fact, taxes and subsidies, electrification and efficiencies, as I mentioned before, uh, focusing on the infrastructure, sustainable aviation fuels, and so on and so far. But last but not least, it's also about travel behavior. It's about travel speed. It's about a question how we personally, individually, uh, can contribute also uh, to, uh, to these big goals. On one hand, we need political pressure. The EU uh, ecological taxonomy is going in that direction. The Green Deal is uh, increasing the pressure. This is, everything is fine. But on the other hand, nevertheless, we need uh, the individuals uh, contributing uh, with, uh, with their uh, behavior uh, to a, a different uh, view and vision on travel. Thank you. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot in, in here in, in that answer. I'm, I'm going to jump to the next question. I'm going to bring you, Caroline, in and then you, Willie, please, if I may. Uh, well, why is it taking us so long? I mean, we, I, I all think we set out with the, with the best intentions, and I talk for myself as well. We do try, and we do talk a lot about trying. Uh, why does it then, to me, seem as if progress is so slow? And and maybe what 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 will simply have to change might be political to some extent. But Caroline, I know that you focus obviously on these initiatives designed to empower and benefit uh, residents and in local communities. That, that that's a a place to start. Maybe talk yeah. a little bit about that, and we can broaden this conversation out. Yeah, they yeah. are. So, of course, there is this political issues and there is society at large, but I do believe that it certainly starts with small initiatives uh, when we really want to make changes. So it's very often that we have to uh, we, we have to drive electric cars, but then there is now a charging station <laughs> around the corner. So these are all I think people do want to uh, to move towards that, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sustainable lifestyle. But um, yeah, when we make it small and have a look at small initiatives within communities, uh, between, uh, let's say, meetings between tourists and residents, between really uh, hotels connecting to, uh, to locals, uh, trying to really give back uh, to uh, the quality of life of the community. So these kind of, which are smaller kinds of uh, perhaps best practices uh, to share, uh, would also help to yeah to create another understanding of how uh, tourism could regenerate even uh, the local society. Perhaps it's too positive. I see you smile, uh, really, but I'm a uh, sort of optimistic person. I say, okay, let's not only talk about the big things, uh, but also start doing small initiatives, sharing the value and celebrating what's going well and telling others about. It. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I'm smiling, uh, smiling in many ways. I think this is such an interesting question because it's talking about change, really. And, and yeah. if, you, if you look at the majority of people, people like status quo, a lot of people, even businesses prefer status quo. They, they're always afraid of change because you never know with change there's, there is uh, unknown and unknown is always problematic. But I think this is such an important question, important question, actually, especially because what you've said, actually, this idea of should we go beyond sustainability to, to be sort of that net positive? And I think this is something we'll be looking at, actually at the ITV Responsible Tourism track now, this this coming ITV on March 7th. Uh, and, I, you know, two approaches just shortly. I mean, you see, and I've asked actually managers not too long ago at the start of this year, how do they see that change? Do they see this betting on incremental improvements, you know, sort of trying to do little step at getting better and then, you know, um, uh, betting on familiar technologies and then improving efficiencies. Or is it entrepreneurs that see those radical innovations, right? Game changers. How do we move forward? And, you know, let's face it. I mean, we, we've had 15 years of incremental improvement and it's, although it's important, I agree, I would say we're not, it's, it's not doing the deal that it should because we are off track. I mean, we are definitely off track. So we will need some radical changes, I think, if we're serious about 
reaching any goals. In fact, whether it's a sustainable mm -hmm. development goals or whether it's net zero, anything like that, to be able to achieve scale and to have impact. Um, I, I mean, to, to discuss how that can be done, I think we need an entire, an entire <laughs> uh, webinar for that. But anyway, <laughs> that's my take, and we'll be talking about that at IT for sure. Yeah, and, and we obviously, loads of us and, and people probably listening today will, will indeed also be there for the sustainability track uh, at, at ITB. Um, I, 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 I want to go, go a little bit crazy now. I, I really, um, um, I, I want a future gaze, really, is what I want to do. Um, and I know that none of you, as far as I'm aware, own a crystal ball, but what will travel look like in 2045 and please do feel free to share your sort of thoughts uh, with me and our audience on progress and scenarios over the coming 20 to 30 years now this this is, this could go in in all sorts of directions but um if if anybody might have an idea it might be the three of you Harald, should we start with you please <laughs> Yeah, just coming back to travel foundations, they showed us also a lot of scenarios. Uh, but one aspect we can definitely see uh, considering uh, climate action and uh, the need uh, to preserve resources and restore, uh, increase this kind of restorative tourism uh, concepts. Uh, obviously, short haul and medium haul uh, tourism. Uh, will increase uh, in confront to long haul. Uh, we will definitely reduce the tendency uh, to, uh, to to go everywhere and uh, at, at any time. Uh, we will uh, do that in a more conscious way. Definitely, we will look at the individual behavior, and we'll, when we look at the societal developments, at the trends uh, we see in the societies. This is uh, for sure so. But on the other hand, I'm coming from the economic sector. I'm sure that uh, the economic innovation will increase and make very big steps and bring us a more sustainable aviation. Uh, and uh, nevertheless, we can then also uh, make our travels uh, in other parts of the world, in other continents. Uh, we will. Uh, use other transport systems uh, and we will nevertheless have great experiences in, in other parts of the world considering uh, the reduction of inequalities as much as we can uh, because obviously tourism is always an instrument to develop economically uh, a nation or a place and that's what also all these destinations, wonderful destinations of the global south want to do but let us consider that the world is only one that this planet we have to keep and that we have to balance the interests and the politics in order to give others the chance to develop uh, tourism as an interesting economic sector considering environmental and social challenges of, of a new world and meanwhile on the other hand the global north uh, all these developed countries highly developed countries uh, with very specific forms of tourism they have definitely to be convinced that we need change our behaviors and uh, that uh, the political system and the economic system should be a very good frame uh, to do that indeed very wise words uh, caroline um 2045, what can I expect? I want to still yeah. be here. <laughs> and we are thinking about, okay, starting point perhaps is how do Gen Z uh, nowadays uh, look at traveling, at their behavior. Uh, in our hospitality track, we will have uh, some insights from Euromonitor about it, so we can <laughs> we could build on it. And perhaps, um, yeah, if we will put it from a positive side and one could say, okay, then there is this common understanding that, uh, yeah, traveling is there. I, I don't believe that people will not uh, travel in, in the future, uh, totally not. But if there would be a sort of common understanding on uh, how, uh, now, yeah, traveling could really support uh, quality of life, the quality of local communities, uh, the, let's say, uh, the consciousness also would then, uh, of course, be uh, on a higher level uh, for these kind of travelers. So in that sense, let's see um, 
uh, really already uh, pointed it out as regenerative tourism. If you would really yeah. think about if this would really work, if tourism could be for good and could contribute in really uh, making a better, even a better world, yeah, then uh, this would be my positive contribution to this uh, web webinar. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, just really. to, yeah, just to pick up on this, I think I think you've just said it right. I mean, tourism 2045 is a from the economic standpoint, so from the business operating standpoint, is an industry that does not focus on doing less harm, but it's an industry that focuses on doing more good. And I think that says it all really, because doing more good is across all pillars of sustainability, whether it's environmental, social, etc. Um as for as for 2045. Um, I mean, I hope I'll be able to travel uh, as, as I did last summer, which is taking my bike and simply cycling across different countries. I'll be a bit older, but nevertheless, hope to still do that. And that's the link to what I think, and it goes along with how Raoul was just saying, the big lever really by 2045 is mobility, in fact. Um, this, is, this is the big part, simply because getting us around is the bulk of our impact. Of course, hotels have got a role to play. Of course, restaurants do. Of course, store operators, etc. But ultimately, transport is the big lever. This is where we have to work at. And hopefully, by 2045, we will have many alternatives. And perhaps this young generation will pick up things such as slow travel with the journey being the destination, not the destination itself. No. Yep. I, I, I think, yeah, I'm, I mean, I would ditto that um, being being surrounded by Gen Zs, you know, at home. Uh, so, you know, and I, I and they travel and they do it. They do it definitely differently. And I think that also they will hold us accountable. That's the generation that will and they are already holding us accountable. Um, so I, I, I think that's that there's hope in, in that regard alone, uh, because I don't think that they will uh, that they will just accept if it's just going to be talk and and no walk. Um, very, very sadly, I have got quite a handful of more questions, mm -hmm. but we are actually coming towards the end of this little video cast. So everybody will simply have to go to ITB Berlin and be there in March uh, for the sustainability track to hear lots more from, from the three of you. Um, what I would like to uh, say, of course, is thanks to Willie, Caroline and Harold for joining. You have been true travel, travel uh, heroes and... Um, <laughs> I think this video cast will definitely get us all ready for the sustainability track, as I said. But I wonder what or which other tracks might you will be looking forward to. Willie, let's start with you. Hey, listen, all of them are great. This is the problem is I, we, 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 need to split, <laughs> we need to split ourselves because everything is so good. But I'm particularly looking forward to the destination track that's happening on the Wednesday, March 6th. But all of them are good. Fantastic. Anything you look forward to, Caroline? Yeah, of course, uh, to the track of the hospitality track, which will uh, yeah, have a view on different kind of uh, developments from a uh, standpoint of the hotel industry in the broader sense, hotel ecosystem, which will be parallel to Willy's uh, uh, sustainability track. But uh, the two stages are quite near to each other. So uh, I can th uh, think that attendees will find us uh, both in, in the different sessions we offer. There's some cross-pollination cross here. Yeah, yeah. And I know the ITB team will be on hand everywhere to help everybody find the right stage. Harald, uh, which stages are, which tracks are you particularly looking forward to? Well, the first uh, day of ITB, there will be the future track. Uh, so I invite uh, all uh, the interested uh, participants and uh, visitors uh, to uh, be part of the question how we have, uh, in what way we can develop future lifestyles. Uh, obviously, this is always uh, very, very close to the question how tourism can contribute becoming an agent of change uh, and even a pioneer. And then the second day, together with Willy, uh, we invite all the interested people uh, to come to the destination uh, track. Uh, the first part of the destination track will uh, deal with uh, questions related to organization, network development, and so on. And only the second part will go into more uh, uh, details uh, related to sustainability, uh, as we discussed it here. Fantastic. I look forward to all of it. I uh, will myself be moderating the diversity track that's also on the fifth. Uh, some amazing speakers there, and also the technology tours and activities track uh on the six so 
plenty for everyone. There are 17 conference tracks to choose from this year. So please do find the one that speak the most to you. Thanks again, Caroline, Willie and Harold. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks also, of course, to our audience for listening. You can find more Travel Hero podcasts on ITB's uh, website. And we hope to see many of you in person in March from the 5th till the 7th. It's pretty much a sold out show as far as exhibition space is concerned. But of course, tens of thousands of visitors will descend on Berlin over the three days. So get your ticket, don't miss out. In the next uh, video cast, which is the final one before we move back to the podcast forum, we will talk about digitization in the travel sector, another big topic. And again, we've got some exceptional experts lined up. So look out for that one in the next weeks. And all that remains for me to say is see you soon again. And thanks for listening. See you. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.